H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. Thanks for watching it. So in this particular section, I'm going to speak about and understand the concept of arrays that is used in the Java language. So what's arrays and how are, what is an array? What are the different kind of arrays? How do you distinguish one array from another array? Why is array important? So we are going to basically see all these questions. So let us uh, now understand uh, arrays from a very layman term. Now what's array all about? Now if you look at array, array is like like colonies. Now we have seen a lot of colonies. We have uh, uh, colonies which are present in your uh, near your steel plants. We have colonies present near uh, in the areas which are into gold mining. So they have their own colonies. So colonies definitely would have a boundary and within the boundary you will have quarters or you will have houses. Okay. Similarly in cities we do have colonies and colonies would have a bifurcation. Uh, there will be one colony from another colonies out here and each colony will have certain number of houses and those houses will have certain uh, areas or certain positions which are defined as the addresses of those houses inside the colony. So a colony would typically look like this. A colony would definitely will have, you know, a kind of boundary and within the boundary, you will have houses and these houses will be situated in a particular position, which is defined by the address of that particular house. So the next point speaks about colony have houses and houses do have addresses. So this, let's say these blue blocks are nothing but houses out here. Now, if you look at this particular uh, houses, each house is situ situated at a particular position and this position of each house is defined by the address of the house. So, if we understand that, let's say I need to deliver a letter to a particular house, I need to define the address of the house. Otherwise, I will be unable to deliver the, the letter to the particular house where I need to deliver the letter. Similarly, a postman, for example, needs to deliver a letter to a particular house situated in a particular colony. The postman needs to understand what is the address written and based on the address of the house, the letter is delivered. So that means every house in a colony does have a specific position or an address by which the house is distinguished from other houses. Now let's look and compare this colony and the houses in the colony with an array. Now array is equal to the colony. So array can be compared to a colony out here. So that is why I have written the particular point that the colony is compared to an array. And the houses inside the company colony can be compared to as a cell in an array. So houses in a colony are equal to cells in an array. And definitely the cells will have an address like the houses in a colony. So that is why the third point is written that addresses of the houses are equal to rows and columns where the cells are situated or present. That means if I consider this particular block where I am hovering my mouse, this will ha this is nothing but a cell. This cell is defined by the row and column. So if I say, let's say this particular house which I am hovering my mouse, this will have row number one, column number one. So that is defined as the address of this particular cell. Similarly, if I if I'm hovering my mouse in this particular cell, okay, this cell will have the address of row number two, column number one. So that means the addresses in a house are equal to rows and columns present in the colony. Let us move forward. Now, what are arrays as a whole? In technical terms, arrays are nothing but objects. Now, what is an object and how an object helps us in management of memory, we'll see that later on. But yes, as an array, uh, in technical terms, 
we define array arrays are nothing but objects and definitely arrays helps us in management of memory space now how does it help us in me management of memory space we see that if you look at a particular variable or let's say a variable a which is defined as an integer type now the variable a can have only one value that means a single data whereas an array variable can have more than one data in other words an array can an array variable can be used to store more than one data. That means if I compare an array to a simple variable, a variable can be of integer type or double type of float or long or boolean or character, it can hold only one data. But if I define the same variable as an array type, the number of data that it can hold will be more than one. And the next question arises is that how much data can an array hold? Number of data that an array can hold depends on the element size of the array. So if I say that the element size of the array is 6, that means that array variable can hold 6 data. Single variable, let's say I define a variable A as an array. Now, if I define the element size of the variable A array as 6, that means that array variable called A can hold 6 data inside it. Now, what do you mean by the element size of the array? If I further understand it, element size is equal to number of rows and number of columns. Okay, so if let's say the number of rows is 3 and the number of columns is 3, so 3 into 3, 6, 6 will be the element size. Okay, that means it can hold, that array variable can hold 6 data. So let's say an array variable has 2 rows and 3 columns, that means the element size of the array is 2 into 3, that means 6 again. Okay. That means the element size of the array is 6, it can hold 6 data. Similarly, let's say array has 4 rows and 3 columns. 4 into 3, 12. 12 is the element size, that means that array variable can hold 12 data. That means a single variable, a single memory space, but that memory space can hold those number of data based on the element size of the array. In normal sense, if you go to understand the basics of arrays, the rows and columns start with numeric value 1. Okay, so in normal behavior, first row, we say first row, second row, third row, fourth row, or columns as first column, second column, third column, fourth column. But in terms of memory of a computer, the first row is considered as index number 0. And the first column is considered as index number 0. So let's say, if a particular array has four rows, in normal cell, we'll call it as row number 1, 2, 3, and 4. But in indexing, we'll call it as row number 0 until row number 3. That means row number 1 will have index number 0. Row number 2 will have index number 1. Row number 3 will have index number 2. And row number 4 will have index number 3. So that is what I have given out here. In normal sense, we have rows and columns starting with numeric value 1. But in computers, the memory accepts rows from 0 and columns also from 0. So this row and column starting with 0 is called as indexing. So, for example, if the number of rows are 2 and the number of columns are 3, the indexing number of rows will start with at 0 and end at 1. So that means if the number of rows is 2, the index number will start at 0 and end at 1. How? Row number 1 will have index number 0. Row number 2 will have index number 1. Similarly, if the number of columns is equal to 3, index number will start at 0 and end at 2. How? Column number 1 will have index number 0. Column number 2 will have index number 1. And column number 3 will have index number 2. That is why the indexing for column will start at 0 and end at 2 for the number of columns which is equal to 3. That is how we define the arrays. Now going back to the next slide, when we define an array, it has to be a particular type of array. So array can be of string type. Now string is not considered as a data type. So we call an array as a string type or an integer data type array or a long data type array or a float data type array or a double data type array or a character data type array or a boolean data type array. So array can be of string type, integer type, long type, float type, double type, character type or boolean type. Now, if we declare a variable as a string array, that string array variable can hold only string type of data. 
Now let's say I have declared a array which is of integer type. Let's say I declared a variable as an integer array. Now that variable can only hold integer type of data. Since I have declared that variable as an integer array type. Okay. So I have declared that array as an integer data type. Similarly, if I define an array, or rather let's say a variable as an array, and that array as a, is defined as a double data type, that array variable can hold data which should be of double data type only. I cannot create a string array and define its value as an integer data type. I cannot define a variable as an integer array and decide to put data which is of string type. That means array can only hold homogeneous data. That means data which are of same type. It cannot hold heterogeneous data. That means it cannot hold different types of data. So if I define a variable as a string array, it can only hold string type of data. It cannot hold any other data type. That is what is defined in this particular point. So a variable declared as a string array can hold only string type. Similarly, an integer, long, float, double, or boolean character data type array can hold data which is of integer, long, float, double, boolean character respectively. Going forward, as we have seen and I have discussed this particular thing, arrays can hold only homogeneous data. That means if I declare an array as a string array, it can only hold data which is of string type. It cannot hold heterogeneous data. Going forward, let's look at a array right now. So we'll discuss first the two-dimensional array. So let us look at an array. The array has certain rows and columns, and these rows and columns will have cells. Okay. So this border, that is a black border, is nothing but the array, and inside the array there are a couple of cells out here which are in blue color. Now, if you look at the uh, Symbolic uh, representation of the array. So this particular border is the as a is the array as I have told, and these are nothing but the cells. Okay, and we have rows. So that is a row number one. Okay. Similarly, you have row number two out here, and definitely we'll have columns starting with column number one, two, three, and four. That means this array is having two rows and four columns. That means the element size of this particular array is two rows into four columns that is equal to eight. That means eight is the element size of this particular array. That means it can hold eight data. And that is why we see out here eight cells. Cell number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is how it is represented by the numeric format which I am showing right now. This is the 5th cell, 6th cell, 7th cell, 8th cell. Now, why do you have 8 cell? Because the element size of this particular array is 8, which is consisting of 2 rows and 4 columns. 2 into 4 is equal to 8. That means 8 cells and 8 cells can hold 8 different data. Going forward, so we will see an example of an array having an element size of 2. That means element size of not two, I would say. This is a typo out here. Element size of six because it has two rows and three columns. So if the column size is more than one, then it is considered as a two-dimensional array. And let us take that as a note. So a two-dimensional array is an array which has more than one column size. So if the number of columns is more than one, we consider is as a two-dimensional array. So in this example, we will consider a two-dimensional array out here. So in this two dimensional array example, cell number one is addressed at row number one, column number one. But in memory of computers, cell number one will have row whose index number will be zero and column whose index number will be zero. So let's say cell number one is having the address of row number one, column number one. That is a normal sense. But how does memory of computer represent that particular address for cell number one? Cell number one will have index number 0 for row number 1 and index number 0 for column number 1 respectively. Similarly, cell number 8. So what is the address of cell number 8? Let's say cell number is, uh, 8 is addressed normally at row number 2, column number 4. But in memory of computers, cell number 8 
has row whose index number is 1 and column number whose index number is 3. Why column number whose index number is 3? Why? Because the address of cell number 8 is second row and fourth column. Okay, so if it is fourth column, the index number of the fourth column will be 3. Similarly, if it is situated, that is cell number 8 is situated in row number 2, that means that is a normal sense or normal understanding. But in terms of memory computer, row number 2 will be defined with index number 1. That is why cell number 8 will be stored inside the memory of the computer as index number 1 and index number 3 for row and column respectively. So let's assume that this is an array of string type. So let's take an example out here. So we'll define an array which is of string type. So if it is an array of string type, it can only hold data which is of string type only. The syntax of the array is, looks like this. So you have, you know, a string that is nothing but the keyword used to define a string array. So such as it is a string array. So definitely it is followed by a variable str. So str is nothing but the variable which is of string array. Now, if you see that pair of double back square brackets out here, the double pair of square brackets symbolizes a two-dimensional array. If we have a single pair of square bracket, it symbolizes a single dimensional array. Now, we understand that in two-dimensional arrays, the number of columns is more than one. So, the first pair of square bracket represents the row. The second pair of square bracket represents the column. Now, as far as the syntax is concerned, Okay, the syntax has a keyword called new, which is on the right side of equal to. The new is nothing but a keyword used to define an object. Now, as I have told you that arrays are nothing but objects. So, we have created a string array object out here using the keyword called new. Now, after the new, there's nothing but uh, the keyword string is used and after that, there's a value called 2 inside the first pair of square bracket that is nothing but the row size is equal to 2 and similarly we have a column size which is defined in the second pair of square bracket which is equal to 3 that means this is the column size of this particular array so in very general term it means that this is a string array which is a two dimensional array having two rows and three columns that means the element size of this particular array is two rows into three columns is equal to 6 that means this is a string array which is of 6. That means the element size of this particular string array is equal to 6. That means it can hold 6 different datas in this variable str which is defined as a string array. Let us say another example out here on another slide. Now we have seen that arrays are of two types. So one is a two dimensional array which we have seen in the earlier slide. Now, this is a single dimensional array. Now, in a single dimensional array, we have only one column. So, please remember this as a note that in a single dimensional array, the number of columns will be always fixed at one. Rows can differ. That is why it has been written out here. Single dimensional arrays have more than one rows and only one column. And this is how the syntax of a single dimensional array can be defined. So, I have defined out here an example which is of a single dimensional array which defines an integer array and the variable a is defined as an integer array okay and that is why you have you have a single pair of square bracket which is equal to the new keyword used followed by the int which is a keyword for a uh, integer data type and followed by the row the row is equal to 2 which is defined in the first pair of square bracket there's only one pair of square bracket and that is a only pair of square bracket which defines a uh, or basically symbolizes the row size. Now, as the column size for a single dimensional array is fixed at 1, we do not have to define the column size typically in a syntax for a single dimensional array. Now, what does this mean? This means that the array is of two rows and one column only. That means what is the element size? All element size will be definitely two rows into one column or two multiplied by one, which is equal to two. That means the element size of this integer array variable A is equal to two. That means this integer array variable can hold two datas, which should be of integer type because the array has been defined as an integer type. 
remember this particular thing arrays can be only used to store homogeneous data so if i have to store data inside this particular array the data should be of integer type so we can keep only two data in this particular variable as the element size is 2 so let us look at this particular diagram right now so if you see this particular diagram the border symbolizes the array the green slabs or this uh, what do you call blocks symbolizes the cells in that array if you look at this particular array out here, this is a single dimensional array which has only one column. Now remember that particular thing, single dimensional array have only one column, the rows can vary. That means this particular single dimensional array has two rows and a single column. So that means the element size is equal to two rows into one column which is equal to two. That is the element size of this particular array and this is how we symbolize a single dimensional array now if i have three rows i have to define one more block for that and the column will remain fixed at one so if it has three rows and one column the element size will become three into one which is equal to three two dimensional arrays we have seen which we can have more than one rows and more than one columns and similarly the syntax is also defined which we have discussed earlier and i have repeated it out here so that's about arrays. Thanks for watching this particular video. We'll see the examples of a single dimensional array and a two dimensional array at a later point of time. Thanks for watching it. If you have any questions, please revert to us.